All right, today's lesson is called the Ten Commandments in the New Testament. So the thing is, is before we show people that the law is not done away with because we are taught by we are saved by grace and that the law is done away with. And because the law is done away with, there is no need to keep the law anymore. So instead of showing that we need to keep the law, my goal today is to show the law in the New Testament. So if I can show the law in the New Testament, maybe that'll open some eyes to some and make them realize this law is not going anywhere and it have not went anywhere. We went somewhere. We left. We went to the ways of the heathens or paganism. And we started worshiping other gods and stuff like that unknowingly, thinking that it's the right thing to do and thinking that in the Bible, all we have to do because of the New Testament and Christ is just be good people. And that's it. And we don't have to worry about anything else. So what I'm doing today is I'm going to show the Ten Commandments in the New Testament. So that's the key right there is. The Ten Commandments is in the New Testament. And if the Ten Commandments is in the, in the New Testament, that means that they can't be done away with because they are in the New Testament. And a lot of people look at that word new and think that something is changed as far as in the old. And I'm going to show tonight, if it's the highest will, what does it mean when it says new? So that you will understand that new may not mean that the old is done away with, but new just mean that the old has expanded. And actually, really, uh, basically, when you when you see what I what I show when it comes to the new. It's still the old, basically, in a nutshell, but you're going to see through scriptures. That's the goal today. So the name of the lesson, once again, is called the Ten Commandments in the new testament so when you uh when someone says the law done away with you can show them the ten commandments in the new testament and the old testament and say what law are you talking about because if it's in the old testament and then i show you that it's in the new testament what law are you talking about that's done away with okay that you that you have to stop doing or that you can stop doing OK, so that's the goal. So first of all, what we're going to do is the basic 101 is we're going to go to the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament first. And then when we go to the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, we're going to find the Ten Commandments in the New Testament to prove nothing changed. OK, and I'm going to show you what changed as far as why. Why is it called new? than old okay so first of all a raw you know what to do go to the ten commandments exodus chapter 20 and read the ten commandments i don't know if i'm gonna stop you on each one or whatever like that but all in all we could, we're just gonna read the ten commandments first in the old testament and then when we go to the old testament and read that we're gonna go to the new and we're gonna find every commandment that we just read in the Old Testament. Con? Oh, Con. So start at Exodus 20? Yeah, yeah, you can start there. Yeah. All right, so Exodus 20, verse 1. And the Most High spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, <clears throat> out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I shall not make unto thee in a grave enemy. Hold on right there. Hold, hold on right there. So thou shalt not make. Uh, thou shalt not worship no other God. That's key. That's the first commandment. Thou shalt not worship no other God. Second one he just read was, you should not make into any graven image. That's the second. Okay, keep going. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. A red light is anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. I shall not bow down, I said to them, nor serve them. By the Lord thy power, I am a jealous God. 
visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Hold on right there for a second. Just, just a reminder. If you start worshiping other gods and eventually they'll become idols and you will worship them for the gods of this world are idols, you will get a visitation from the Most High. And for those that are the children of Israel, which is us, we'll have a curse coming upon us. So we have to be careful because it says visiting the iniquities of the children upon the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. That third and fourth generation, that is your great grandparents. So by the time you have your great grandparents, that's the fourth generation uh, from you. Everything that was passed down through them, you the last hope or the last link. And it either start over or when you have children, hopefully that curse will be broken through you. But you have to break the curse or it'll just start over from generation to generation. And so technically... Being cursed from the third and fourth generation, technically, that's around 150 to 200 year curse. Because if you look at it, if you have your great grandparents, whenever they was whenever they was born, and then the timeline of um, when you was when you pass in that fourth generation, that's around. 150 to 200 years. So that's how long that curse is. I'm just giving you an example of when he said, visiting the iniquities of the children upon the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And of course it says, showing mercy unto a thousand of them that love me and keep my commandments. That's also, you know, breaking the curse. But I'm just showing you how long that curse will be in that family is at least around 150 years, if not 200 years. Because if you go from the timeline of when that grandparents was born all the way to the death of the great grandchild that's around 200 years if you add it all up right there okay so i'm just giving you a, you know exactly you know so you can see that curse and how deep it is and how far it actually goes and how it has definitely screwed us up because our forefathers start worshiping other gods and now we are the curse breakers so we are all you know breaking the curse so that it won't be passed down from from us to the next generation. Okay, so you can keep going. Okay. And show mercy on the thousand of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Okay, first of all, not... yeah, first of all, we got to know what his name is. Of course, we know the name. We go to Exodus chapter three. Verse, I mean, it's, yeah, Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 through 15. And he, in the Most High, the only place he give his name at is that them scriptures. I am that I am, a higher, a shaw, higher. He said, this is my name forever and a memorial unto all generations. How, more, how long is all generations and how long is forever? We should not go away from that, no matter what the enemy try to bring to us and tell us another name. That's the name of the Most High. That's the name we have to go by, and he won't hold us, and he won't hold us guilt, guiltless if we call on another name. Okay, go ahead. Why should not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain? For the Lord will not hold him guiltless to take up his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy power. In it, thou shalt not do any rest, any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in the midst, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and holiday. Hold on right Father there. Thy father and so hold on right there. So first of all, we got to realize that, you know, the Sabbath is not just another day. We got the understanding that the Sabbath is also a timeline that the Most High sought up as a sign between us and him and the, and the return and coming of Christ. When he said that, um, when it talks about in Genesis 6, man shall not uh, live but 120 years. 
That's speaking of a, that's speaking of jubilees. 120 times 50 is 6,000 years. And he said, Christ said, I go and prepare a place. So he restarted recreating again and then uh, all the way to 6,000 years. And then Christ come, Christ going to come back in that 6,000th year. He's going to cut time short because there'll be no flesh saved if he didn't. So no man knows the hour or the time, but he give, I mean, but the day, but he give us the times to look, to know that we are in the, in the times. And then after he complete the thousand year millennial reign, the new heaven and the new earth, the new Jerusalem, which is the seven thousandth year, which will be another Sabbath. Being that it'll be another Sabbath, that is the that is the time of rest, and we have the we have the new Jerusalem. So the Sabbath is very important because it's a timeline that the Most High sought with us, so that we can keep up with the times, and we'll understand that. Of the times we have, and Satan know also those times, so he got a short time. It's he's trying to hurry up and destroy us before that time, but Christ's gonna cut it short. So you can't make the Sabbath another day for the fact that it's the timeline that the most high have in place so that we can follow his time and not the world's time. Okay, go ahead. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days that be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That's not kill. Hold on right there for a minute. Let, let me go back to that. When it says, Honor thy father and thy mother, for your days will be long upon the earth, you have to realize how deep that is because if you disrespect and dishonor your, your mother and father, your time will be cut short because Satan was the first son of the Most High. Who disobeyed the father. You will be imitating. Emulating. Following Satan. Copying him. So that's very deep. To the most high. If you dis disrespect your parents. Because. Satan disrespect. The father. The Holy Spirit. And did what he did. So that's very deep. That's why your time can be cut short. For disobeying your parents. Or not honoring your parents. Now, Christ going to give something else a little deeper than that as far as um, and we may go into that. Now, if your parents are worshiping Satan, of course, you do not follow them. You can honor your parents without following if they're worship, worshiping paganism and stuff. And that's that's what uh, Christ went more into when it says honor your mother and your father. Christ went deeper into it and says you can honor them, but don't follow their wicked ways, their traditions. If. They're following Satan. If they're following the tradition of men, you follow the most high. But honor your mother and your father regardless. Respect. All right, go ahead. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Nor his man servant. Nor his maid servant. Nor his ox. Or talking, or anything that is our neighbors. Okay. And all the people saw the practice. Okay, you can stop right there. So majority, if you look at the commandments, Christ broke them up into two when he said, Love the most high, a higher your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. That is the first commandment, which is the first four commandments. That's to God. That's to the most high, a higher. And then the last six. Or to the to man, honor thy mother and thy father. Uh, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet, because the covet will lead back into breaking all the commandments. Because that's what Satan did. Satan coveted, you know. So those last six, that's the, you know, treat people how you want to be treated. You know, respect people. And then that them commandments are to man. Most people or most churches teach the last six commandments, but they do not teach the first four commandments or they don't know. They don't understand what the first four, first four commandments really mean because they are worshiping other gods. And by them worshiping other gods, they have no idea that they are, they are not following the first four. OK, so now we have read the commandments. In Exodus chapter 20, 
So the thing is, is people say, hey, the law is done away with in the New Testament because we're covered under grace. But instead of me showing you, hey, this telling you to keep the law, this telling you to keep the law. This time I'm going to show you the law in the New Testament. And by me showing you the law in the New Testament, you will know, hey, I need to keep it. Or you're going to have a struggle in your mind because you see it's right there, right before your face. And right because it's right before your face, you got a decision to make. Should I keep the law or not keep it? That's up to you. All right. So first of all, we're going to look for the first commandment. I don't know if I got this in order, but if we don't have it in order, all in all, these are the commandments in the New Testament, which is in the Old Testament. First of all, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Let's try Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. This is Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Then said the shy unto him, Did thee hence Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Well, there's the first commandment, and that's said by Christ, Yeshua, to Satan, who we got to fight against. And that's the beginning of the war is thou shalt not have no other God above the most high. So there you go right there. Christ said himself to Satan, to the leader of evil or what we call evil. Right there, the first commandment. There you have it in the New Testament. Can't deny it. All right. So now we're going to go to 1 John chapter 5 verse, let's try 21. Verse 21. The book of 1 John chapter 5 verse 21. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Keep yourself from idols. Why? Because in the Old Testament it says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. There's the commandments right there. There's the second commandment in the New Testament. All right, we're going to continue that. Go to Acts chapter 17, verse 29, I believe. Acts 17, verse 29. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we are not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone engraven by art and man's devices. OK, so that's once again, that's adding on to you should not think of the most high. We should not think of it as um, gold or silver or stone graven by arts. That's the graven images, man devices. These are man devices. So now we know also the second commandment is thou should not have making to the any graven images. And then it's, of course, we know in the Old Testament, it names, you know, the things of the sea, um, under the earth, above heaven. And it says these are man devices. OK, so this is also known as man's devices. Why? Because they made them. These are temples made with hands or idols made with hands. OK, so this is man's devices. All idols you see were made by men. OK, so now. Let's see here. Let me go to this first because I think this one might be out of order. Like I said, these may not be in order, but I'm going to look at this first to make sure what is going, where it's going to. I don't want to flow and think it's going to go to the next one in the commandments. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, Mark, go to Mark. Chapter 2, verse 27 through 28. It's the book of Mark, chapter 2, verse 27. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Okay, now we can explain that. Why? Because I told you earlier. In Ezekiel 20, 20, the Sabbath was made for a sign between you and the Most High. So it was made for man. Why? To keep track of the times. 
The Sabbath was made for man to keep track of the times. And it says the son of man, which is Yeshua, is the Lord also of the Sabbath. OK, so, of course, he's waiting for the father to say it's time. So that countdown, the Jubilees, 6,000 years, 120 Jubilees. These are Sabbaths. Jubilees are known as Sabbaths. You got every, one Jubilee is 49 years and the 50th year is a new Jubilee. So you complete that. And also you have the sevens. The sevens are operating in Sabbaths. As you go seven, you go seven years. That's a Sabbath. You go 70 years. That's another Sabbath. I mean, of the Jubilee. Seven years is Jubilee. 70 years is a Jubilee which is also known as like a generation. And then you got the 700, which is a Jubilee known as a time. And then of course you got 700, 7,000. 7,000 is the 7,000th year when the new Jerusalem come. It's the new heaven and new earth. This is also known as a Jubilee. So that's why the Most High says that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. It's for us to keep the times because we know that time is short for Satan. And that's the time of judgment. So we prepare ourselves. And like this week, we got the memorial blowing of the trumpets. This is the warning. We got a warning coming. Blowing of the trumpets. We got 10 days to get ourselves together. To get ourselves right. Before atonement. Then the Most High make an atonement for our sins. He did that once a year for the children of Israel on the other side of the flood. This was also known as a new year because it's an atonement you make it. And then also, like I said, when uh, you got the other holy days that's coming, which is tabernacle, the gathering. So you got all this coming up right now as we speaking on this recording right here. All right. And of course, we got to keep that. Um, so now let's go to first Timothy chapter six, verse one. First, the book of first Timothy, Timothy six, verse one. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all one. The name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. There you go. It says, thou shalt not use the most high name in vain. So it's there's there's the next commandment right there. Them was, if I'm not mistaken, them was all the first four commandments in the New Testament. So for anybody to say that we don't keep the law no more, where you got it, where you got it from? Because you did not get it from scripture. The scripture says we still have to uphold the law, even in the New Testament. All right. So now we got the first four commandments out of the way. When Christ said, love the most high your God with all your heart, mind, body and soul. We don't did that. We got it also in the New Testament. So now that's written down in semen. We put it on stone right there. That's in stone. We got to keep the first four commandments, which is to the most high God in the New Testament, not just the Old Testament. So let's go forward. Let's see if we got the um, keeping the commandments. That's to man. The uh, last six. Let's see if we can find them in the New Testament. All right. We're going to have we're going to go to Hebrews chapter four, verse four, verse nine and verse 10. If I'm not mistaken. Hebrews chapter four, verse four, verse nine and verse 10. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 4 For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise and God did rest the seventh day from all his works verse 9 there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God but he that is entered into his rest he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his okay so this is this is speaking on the Sabbath again so this is still talking about the Sabbath once again, we got to keep the Sabbath. I thought we was going forward, but we're going to go forward in a minute. But this is the continuation of what I was just talking about when it comes to the Sabbath and the name of the Most High. 
So once again, we're talking about the Sabbath. And then the most I said, hey, if you want to keep another day, that's on you. But you got to keep the Sabbath because it was made for you, not you for it. So the most I told us we got to keep the Sabbath because it was made for us. And I explained why it was made for us. OK. So anything else, if you if you follow Sunday worship, it ain't the fact that you're following an evil day by itself alone. It's the fact you're not following the most High's sign. The sign between you and him, Exodus 20, 20. So you're not following his sign. You're following another sign. You're going down on another road, another path. That's not the path of the Most High because his path says that you have to follow the Sabbath. You shall follow the Sabbath and, and um, keep it holy because he also kept the Sabbath. And that sign is for you to keep for the times to come. Each season from Sabbath to Sabbath. New months to new months or new seasons to new seasons. We got to keep the Sabbath. And all seasons and times are based off Sabbaths. All right. Now let's go to Mark chapter 7 verse 10. So then was the sixth, the first four commandments that was to the most high. Mark chapter 7 verse 10. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curse her father or mother, let him die to death. Okay. Um, let me go to there because I'm probably going to have you to read the rest of that because that's what I was talking about when Yeshia made it more, more detailed when he said, when he talked about how you honor your mother and your father, but if they follow in wickedness, don't follow that though. You can honor them, but don't follow their wickedness if they're wicked. Um, I told you to read 10, uh, read until, just keep reading, keep, keep going. All right, verse 11, but you say, if a man should say to his father and mother, it is Corban, that it is to say a gift, but uh, whatsoever you might be profited by me, he shall be free. And you suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. Making the word of God, none of faith. Your traditions which you have delivered, and many such like things you do. When he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Offer unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entered into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. And if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, we'll start right there. We'll thinking. start right there. But anyway, that's basically what I was showing right there. But all in all, Back to what I was saying at the beginning. There is the next commandment in the New Testament. Honor thy mother and thy father. So there you have it. There's the next commandment in the New Testament. All right. So now we're going to go to Romans chapter 13 verse 9. Romans chapter 13 verse 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. I mean, sorry, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Whoa. How many commandments right there, Wolf? We got a we got a good little bit of commandments all right there. Once again, instead of instead of saying, hey, man, you got to keep the law. I'm showing you the law in the New Testament. So, you know, you got to keep it. So that's the key right there. If if you're saying thou shall not commit adultery, thou shall not steal. I mean, thou shall not kill. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not bear false witness. OK, there it is. And thou shall not covet. That is one, two, three, four commandments. So there you have it. There's there's the commandments, more commandments in the New Testament. OK, so if anybody say the Old Testament, the, the law done away with and the Old Testament is now you don't have to do that because now you got the new. Where did you get that from? Because 
It's in the New Testament. The same thing that's in the old that tell that's telling you to keep the law that that's giving you the law is giving you the same thing here in the New Testament. All right. So now we are going to Matthew chapter 19, verse 18 through 19. Matthew chapter 19, verse 18. He says nothing in which he said, I said not, I said no murder. I should not commit adultery. I should not steal. I should not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And I shall love thy neighbor as thyself. So you telling me this is Christ talking? Hmm. So Christ is telling them to keep the commandments and he's naming them. So being that he's naming them. Once again, who said the law done away with when Christ is giving you the law out of his own mouth? He's actually telling you that in his own mouth. This ain't the Old Testament. This is the New Testament. So if Christ tell you that, who told you the law done away with? What that person that? Because they are going against what Christ is telling them right now in the scriptures in written and read. This is Christ speaking. All right. So now. We're going to go to Romans chapter, let's see, I know I read that 13 and 9. Uh, let's try Romans 7 and 7. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid, nay. I had not known sin but by the law. I had not known lust except the law has the law has said, thou shalt not covet. What? So, how would you know what sin is if there is no law? That's the key. If you're going to call me out and say I'm sinning, how would you call me out if you told me the law done away with? If I'm telling you I'm a New Testament uh, Christian. So, if I'm telling you I'm a New Testament Christian, then you can't tell me, and then you tell me that the law done away with. Right here, reread re -re that once again, my brother. Tell it uh the 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 book, the the uh, chapter and the uh, verse. Romans chapter seven verse seven. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. But I had not known lust except the law has said, "Thou shalt not covet." Okay, so you wouldn't know what sin is unless it's there's a law. And then, of course, it says sin is the transgression of the law. That's another scripture I'm throwing in there. What is sin? The transgression of the law. Meaning if you break a law, there that's that's a sin. So this is the New Testament. And it says, hey, if you say the law done away with, it just said I would not have known what sin was if it wasn't for the law. What preacher told you that the law done away with? How would you follow the Most High and his laws if you think the law done away with? All right. So I wanted to show that right there. But um, and now I'm going to show you what happened. Why? Why is it called New Testament versus Old Testament? Because when you hear the word old, you think that, hey, we don't need that no more. Technically. It's not Old Testament, it's Old Covenant. And the New Testament is really called New Covenant. But I'm going to show you what was old and what told you what was going to be new. The prophecy of the New Testament. What was this New Testament or this New Covenant? I'm going to show you this New Covenant in the scriptures. Go to Jeremiah chapter 13. 31 verse 33. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So there you have it. There is the New Testament right there. The prophecy of the New Testament. 
them same laws in the Old Testament, he's going to put them off the stone and place them in your heart. I'm going to give you more scriptures and then I'm going to tell you how he's going to do that. And that's going to be the key to understand the New Testament is how he's going to place those that that the old the Old Testament. He's going to place those laws in your inward parts or in your heart. All right. We're going to continue with the scriptures. Now we're going to go to um, Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19. We're going to continue the old first. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart of, of their out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh. Okay, so once again, he's going to give them a heart of flesh. He's going to take that old and place it in the heart now. This is the new covenant. This is the new testament. Once again, this is the new testament. Now go to Chapter 33, verse 26 of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verse 26. You stand upon your sword. You work abominations. You defile everyone as neighbor's wife. And, sh and shall you possess the land? Okay. Uh, let's see what I told you. Um, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. Uh, 33. So you want to go 36? Yeah, 36. Um, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. All right. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you an heart of flesh. All right, so y'all hear that right there. So something something's going to happen in the New Testament that wasn't in the old, but it's coming from the old. Okay, so he, he's magnifying more of, of the Most High's power. The Most High is magnifying more of his power in the new, but it's from the old, though. Okay, because he's placing that from that that was written. Remember, the, the Ten Commandments was written by the finger of the Most High. He's going to place that in your inward parts of your heart. Okay, so now uh, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21. The book of Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21. As for me, this is my covenant with them, said the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my word which I will put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth that I see, nor out of the mouth that I see, see, said the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Wow. Okay. Okay. Huh. Now, we're going to go to, uh, let's see, we'll go to Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10, and then we're going to go to. We're going to stay in Hebrews for a second for another verse. Now, this is the, the book of Hebrews. Hold on for a second. This is the New Testament verifying the Old Testament. As far as the same scriptures we just read in the Old, now we're going to read it in the New. Just like we read the Ten Commandments in the Old, and then we turn around and found them in the New. Okay, go ahead. It's the book of Hebrews. Chapter 8, verse 10. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. All right. So look at that. He will put the laws in the mind. Don't forget about that. The laws in the mind. All right, go to chapter 10, verse 16 of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Okay, in their minds will I write them, in their hearts. 
put them in your hearts and in your mind will I write them. All right. We're going to continue. We're going to go to uh, 2 Corinthians. Let me go to it. I wrote chapter 33, but I didn't write what scripture. So let me see. Hold on. Ain't no 30. Uh, one second. Make sure I got the right thing wrote down here. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Let me go to it and make sure that's right. Chapter 3, verse 3. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ business about us, for it is not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not in tables of stone, but in fleshing tables of the heart. Oh, look at that. Once again, there you have it. In the heart. In the heart. So now we got to understand there's some things happening in the Old Testament and in the New Testament with these laws. Something going on, something happening. We got to understand what's happening. Okay. Let's go to Romans chapter 2, verse 7 through 16. Romans chapter 2, verse 7 through 16. Look at Romans chapter 2, verse 7. For them who by patient continuance and well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey our righteousness in the nation of wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of the man that do of evil, but the Jew first and also the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that works for good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of person with the Most High. For as many have sinned without the law, shall perish without the law. As many as have sinned in the law, shall be judged by the law. For the hearers of the law are just before the Most High, but the doers of the law shall be judged. For not the hearers of the law are just before the Most High, but the doers of the law shall be justified. But when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these things having not having not the law are a law unto themselves. We show the work of the law written in their heart. What? Also Repeat that. Word. Repeat fifteen, that little part again and keep going. Verse fifteen. We show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts to mean while accusing or else excusing one another. And the day when the most I shall judge the secrets of men are inside of Christ according to my gospel. Okay, so now we see that the law is not done away with in the New Testament that came from the Old Testament. The only thing he said was he's going to place what was in the Old Testament, which is the law, in your hearts. So by him placing them in your hearts. There's something that changed. What changed right there, when we read, I'm going to read verse 15 again. It says, which it says, which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Their conscience also bear witness. And their thoughts, the means while accusing or else, accusing one another. When it says their conscience also bear witness the key thing is doing first fruits and Pentecost those who was baptized received the gift of the Holy Spirit that's the conscience that's the seal those who have the name of the Most High and the Holy Spirit that's the part that was given in the new is the Holy Spirit. 
Everything stayed the same. Now, of course, we can talk about Christ and says, what about the sacrifice? Of course, the sacrifice was done away with because of Christ, Yeshua. When Yeshua came and fulfilled the New Testament, everything that was in the old now was placed in your hearts. And then you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, which is the new covenant, is the Holy Spirit. That's the new covenant. That's the inward parts that was placed in your hearts, in your spirit. And you were sealed once when you was baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's the, that's the difference right there in the Old Testament and the New Testament is that the law was taken off your heart. I mean, off the stone placed in your hearts and you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's the new covenant. The New Testament and it's of, of course it's under Christ Yeshua so ain't nothing changed so for those that think that the Old Testament is done away with then you can go what Christ said when he said think not that I came to destroy the law or the prophets but I came to fulfill fulfill means he's the he's the way that's what that means he did everything righteous according to the Old Testament now he is the way in the New Testament. Nothing changed. He did everything in the old, meaning you're going to do everything in the old because you're going to follow him. He's just the way. And then you got the help through the Holy Spirit when he took the law off the old and placed it in you. That's the new. The law is in you now. Now you got to operate and you got help through the Holy Spirit. And now you justify it through the blood of Yeshua because the old was not good enough for you to make a sacrifice for your sins or the things you break. But now everything is justified through Yeshua, who they call Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Okay, so that is the New Testament is the stone, the law being placed within your hearts. You being filled with the Holy Spirit and you are under Christ, Yeshua. That's the only thing that's different, which is not different because Christ is the law. Because in the, uh, even though it's under Moses, it was given by Christ to Moses because Christ said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And if you look up in Psalms, the book of Psalms, it says the law, thy law is the truth. So that means that that is Christ. Christ is the law that was given by Moses. And then Christ fulfilled that by coming into the flesh and operating. And through him, that law, that truth was placed in you. And you were sealed with the Holy Spirit with the name of the Most High, Ahia, Asha, Ahia. So with that being said, the thing I wanted to show everyone is... The Ten Commandments in the New Testament. So you can't say the Ten Commandments are done away with because it's in the old. When I showed you, it was in the new. So now we know we got to keep the law, even though I can show you a hundred scriptures that says keep the law. But I'm showing you the law in the New Testament so that you know nothing changed. Only thing changed is you were sealed with the Holy Spirit through baptism and believing in Christ. Believing in the resurrection of the dead, laying on the hands, and uh, believing in eternal judgment. There's a hell. Okay, so with that being said, uh, do anybody got any questions or comments based off the lesson? And then I may go and, and uh, do the other part I was talking about. But if not, it's fine too. But anybody got any questions or comments based off the lesson? Which is called the Ten Commandments in the New Testament. Uh, uh, yes, Brother Aaron. Yes, ma'am. Um, you spoke of um, a place in Psalms. If you read Psalms just a second ago, what do you know what chapter or what scripture that was? Let me go to Would it real quick. In? Okay, let's go to it real quick. Thanks. Let me see, can I find it real quick? Let me see. Mm. 
give me one second because we got a little time. I, I finished kind of early. second all right I think it's Psalms 119 let's go there real quick Psalms 119 verse 142 let's see y'all All right, here it is right here. When Christ say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It says in Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. It says, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Christ is the truth, so... When people say the law and they talk about the law of Moses, Moses was given the law through Christ because here it is right here. If Christ say, I am the way, the truth and the life, no man comes to the father, but through me, that truth is also the law. Christ is the law and he's the truth. Okay, um, Brother Aaron, and if I may say, I've, <laughs> out of all my years of being here and um, on this earth and being in the Word, understanding the Word, put it that way, um, I've never had to talk like this to go back into the Old Testament and yet find the commandments in both the new and the old and to state how the law was taken off the stone and yet placed in your heart. And I, I never had it taught like that. And I am so overwhelmed right now. I'm like, if I wouldn't get put away, you know, um, in a straight jacket, I'd run down the street. But <laughs> this is awesome. And I am really enjoying it. And I really appreciate uh, you and the brothers and, and 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 just just everything. I'm just so just so ecstatic right now. Hey, praise a higher, praise a higher, praise a higher. Praise a higher. Anybody got anything else based off the lesson first? I think we're going to end it in a little bit, but um, and I can add, like I said, I can still do what I was talking about. I can make that a lesson later on. That won't be no problem. And then get everybody involved in what I was talking about. But, uh, but yeah, the, um, the Old Testament is not done away with. It never was. Uh, just to give you an example um, we read the Hebrew Credo. Let me go to the Hebrew Credo. When we do the Shema, we do the Shema in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. I'm going to just show you this real quick. And we would do a, a, an assignment to show that, you know, the Old Testament is not done away with it because everything written in the new is also in the old. But uh, just to show you something quick, um, I'm going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. 4 through 6. I'm going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. And... Uh, I'm 
All right, I'm finna read it real quick. I'm going to the other scripture also. Okay, so now this is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thine heart. Okay, so now let's go to Yeshia. Let me show you what he did in Mark chapter 12. Okay, um... All right, Mark chapter 12, verse, I'm going to start at verse, uh, let's see here, verse 28 through 29. No, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to verse 31. Okay, uh, he, Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 31. It says this, it says, and one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and proceeded that he had answered them well asking him which is the first commandment of all and it says in verse 29 and Yeshia answered him the first of all the commandments is hear O Israel the Lord our God is one and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is, this, there is none other commandment greater than these. And that's what I was talking about when Christ split it up the commandments. The first four is to the most high. The, first, the last six is to your neighbor. And the beginning, if you see what he did, is all Christ did was he read Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. That's all Christ did. So I'm showing you, if Christ, which is our Savior, went to the Old Testament and read the Old Testament, what make us think that it's done away with? As far as those who say it's done away with. It's ne it, it never was. And the enemy played a number on us. We have to get the whole volume of the book. It says the oracles of the Most High, the volume of the book. He's in all of it. So I just want to show you that that Christ opened up the Old Testament. And I can show you many scriptures where that happened. But Christ opened up the Old Testament and he read out of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So and the Hebrew credo, we will always say that. We will say, Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allahaya Nawa Ahaya Achad, which means, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Okay. And hey, let me get that up, man. But well, he was actually, like you said, he, Christ read it out of the Old Testament. He was teaching out of the Old Testament. Uh, during his when he resurrected and uh, was with his apostles. Oh yeah, uh, they was they was confused. You yeah, know, they they still didn't know. You know what I mean? So, so Christ had to, he had to uh, go open up the Torah and show them all the precepts concerning him. Right, right. It's in Luke, it's um Luke chapter twenty four verse twenty five. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, "Then he said unto them, and this is when he resurrected, and he um came back. He revealed himself to the apostles." He said, then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So notice that. He went to the Old Testament and showed them everything of concerning him in the Old Testament. Because it was no need to make nothing new written down in the New Testament because everything that fulfilled was in the old. So the only thing he did was place what was in the old in your heart. 
through the Holy Spirit being sealed with the name of the Most High. Awesome. All right. Anybody got anything else before we close out? Yeah, hey, quick question, brother. Uh-huh. Uh, so the, uh, the circumcision of the heart in the New Testament, is that the same? That's with it. Uh, you, in, you in yeah, the spirit. The same understand. You in, I write it on our heart. You in the spirit. That's correct. 100%. You in the spirit. Yeah. 100%. He said okay. the circumcision of the heart because he was talking about, they was worried about the physical part. But he was like yeah. the circumcision of the heart and also the purging, you know, the purge, um, purge out the old lump or the old living within your heart. All that's the same. What Christ came and changed the game because Christ, when he said it ain't what goes in your mouth that defiles you, it what comes out. Christ was working on that spirit. Christ was about coming for that spirit, not that flesh. So that's 100% right there. Uh, actually, I had that wrote down. I didn't go to the scriptures, but I had that wrote down to remind me about the circumcision and then saying the circumcision of the heart. So these are key things. Um, you know, of course, us being the children of Israel, you know, we go back to different things we wear. We wear the stuff that we supposed to wear according to scripture and stuff. But the most important thing is if your heart not right, it don't matter what you wear on the outside. Yeah, so I can answer that too. How Christ changed the game, you know, like like you said, he really focused on that inward man. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know, like you got know, just look at life, everyday life today. Like, how many people do you know who outwardly appear righteous, but you know that person, you know that person ain't right. You know they doing like you know they doing in the dark. You know they little secret. You know that person ain't right, but everybody put on that front when they go out in public. But it's kind of like how the, how the brethren was in the ancient world. You know, you like you said, it was, they'll follow some law, they'll honor, some, honor the mother and father the Sabbath day, but it was certain stuff they didn't care for. And, you know, and, and they were all right. I mean, just, just look at them. They actually delivered him up, you know, to die. Because inwardly, they weren't right. You know, outwardly, they appear righteous, but inwardly, they wasn't right. They persecuted the apostles because inwardly, you know, they were right. So Christ is really about, yeah, you still, you still, you know, you wear your garments and you still keep the Sabbath and you still eat the right food, but inwardly you must be right also. Yeah. And remember, goes on to what you were saying. The key thing is, you know, after he said, you know, I didn't come to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill. And then he said, of course, he said, verily I say unto you, until heaven and earth pass, there'll be no wise you know, one jot or one tittle of this will disappear or will be, you know, will be gone. But he said, except you exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall no wise enter into the kingdom of the most high. That's that inner man, that inner, because the scribes and Pharisees in the in the appearance, they looked like they was Israelites. They looked like they was righteous men. But you have to exceed that. That's why Christ worked on that inner instead of worried about, OK, you you got on fringes and this and that right there. OK, sister, your head cover. Well, you could be wicked and have your head cover. You could be wicked and have fringes on. But your inward part what, what's going to count in the end when you, Christ come back or when you are judged for righteousness, it'll be what's on the inside that will be judged, not the outer. All right, all right. Well, with that being said, I praise the Most High. Once again, like I said, the lesson was called The Ten Commandments in the New Testament. And uh, like I said, we got a big month coming up. 